Hello beautiful and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video that's gonna be my monthly haul. I'm gonna let you know about all the things that I've added into my collection in the month of August. Time has lost all of its meaning. I'm just gonna show you all the things that either bought or got in PR. I'm gonna let you know my first impression thoughts. Some of these I've been trying out a bit more. Just letting you know what's been added, letting you know what you can expect from my channel, from the things that I haven't tried yet. And if you haven't been before, do consider subscribing because I upload at least five videos a week all about makeup and beauty, just having fun with makeup, playing with color, not taking it too serious. <laughs> So I do have quite a lot of things here and if you have been on my channel before you might have watched a video where I am toying with the idea of doing a low buy because I want to save a little extra money because I do spend a lot of money on makeup and I also feel like you get in a rut sometimes where I'll be honest as a makeup like reviewer it is kind of easy to just buy the newest eyeshadow palette and make a video about that and I want to I want to still review the new, but I also want to dig into my collection and I also want to be a little bit more creative with my content and I want to give myself a little bit of a break from the stressful hamster wheel that the new, new, new can be. So this is the probably, will this be then? I think this is going to be the last month that I am shopping. I don't want to say mindlessly because I do shop with intent. I do shop stuff that I think Think you will be interested in seeing reviews on or stuff that I myself am genuinely interested in and usually those two do align with themselves like with each other. English. Hard. English is not my first language. I know people get annoyed when I say that but sometimes people ask why I'm what my what my accent is and my accent is that this isn't my like my main language my first language. I did film this look. I filmed it for like TikTok slash Instagram. I might put it as a short hair as well. We'll see what happens. I actually did use a palette that I'm gonna be uh, talking about here today. So let's start with the things that I uh, bought myself and then we'll end with the things that I got in PR and you will see that I did actually receive quite a lot of things in PR and had I not bought all of these things I still would have had a lot of things to review on my channel. Let's start with something that I bought that I haven't used and that I have actually no intention of using either and that is the uh, Urban Decay She-Hulk palette. I actually had such a bad experience with customer service that I ended up not wanting to use this palette. I customer honestly customer service was horrible. The packaging is really beautiful of this one. I haven't touched this. I'm gonna put this in a giveaway. Um, I mean I think that this palette is boring and I don't think that this palette really <laughs> I need to stop thinking that, oh, this is going to be the palette where Urban Decay is like, you know, I don't know, reinventing themselves, getting back on the hip train. They're not on the hip train. That's not the train that they're trying to get on. They're like straight to the retirement home. That's where they are at this point in time. I don't hate the look of this palette, but I wish I hadn't bought it. It's still here. I'm not going to try and return it because honestly, like I said, customer service, one of the worst experiences I've ever had with customer service, not only did they lie to me more than once, uh, they also were extremely rude and dismissive. And yeah, I really would like to just never talk to the Urban Decay customer service ever again. So I will have a giveaway at some point. Um, this has been some really, really stressful weeks for me. And I'm tr that's also a reason why I want to shop a little less because I want to... In Sweden, you say landa. Uh, I want to land in me and in this room and in my routines. And I feel like I need to do that for myself. I'm going to have a video. I don't know if I'll be able to film it this week. I'm hoping so. Just talking about what I want my low buy to be. Uh, what kind of rules I want to have for myself. Thank you, by the way, for all these amazing suggestions that you gave me. Those were really, really good suggestions and really did make me think a lot about like what I want to do for me and for you and for all of that. So let's talk about some other things that I bought. I bought the Natasha Denona uh, My Dream uh, collection. I bought the cheek palette and the eyeshadow palette and I bought the lippies. I've heard some people saying they hate the packaging, but I love the packaging. I think this is one of my favorite packaging from Natasha Denona. It is like a, a soft peach, soft touch packaging with this shiny block. I love it. I, I, I've heard some people really hate it. So, I mean, if you hate it, I'm, I'm not holding it against you. I'm just saying that I kind of love it. I think it's beautiful. So, I bought all of these products. And can I say, I am so impressed with like these things. I had to stop myself. I used these products, the lip gloss and this cheek palette, so many days in a row that I was like, 
but you have other things to review. So I can tell you right now that lip products and this cheek palette stunning 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 i really really love them the eyeshadow palette is beautiful too but as someone oh i haven't removed the plastic should we remove the plastic it's so satisfying to remove the plastic let us where am i putting this on my desk as someone who owns a lot of this is a oh you can see here it's a pink to a green can you see it in the it's, it's like a pink to a green. Yeah, you can see it clearly. As someone who owns a lot of Natasha Denona, I don't think that this palette is bringing anything new to the table, if I'm going to be honest. I feel like I own... My dogs are being so dramatic. I feel like I own all of this from other Natasha Denona palettes. But if you do not own one of these bigger palettes from Natasha Denona, I could not recommend this one enough because I feel like this one has all of her great formulas in great quality in a color scheme that actually is kind of a good color scheme. The only thing that I'm missing from this one that she does so well are those almost white masks or such good lid shades in the corner highlight. Like they're so great. And she has one in the retro, for example. Love it, reach for it a lot. But I do think that this is a really good quality palette. But as someone who owns a lot of Natasha Denona, Maybe this isn't like the most revolutionary thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, by the way, I tried to save a bunch of swatches so that I can show you swatches of the things that I've already swatched. Because I thought that that may bring like a little extra. I will also link uh, down below. I will link videos to, because I have a dedicated video on this one. If I have dedicated videos on any of these things, I would link it down below. Uh, but I thought I'd also bring up some swatches if I've already done swatches. Like I'm not going to take the time to do new swatches, but if I have swatches, I'm going to put them in because I'm going to be honest with you, B-roll with swatches, I, I don't, maybe I'm slow, but it takes me ages, like hours. I also bought the ABH, is, I keep forgetting, Rose Metals. I keep thinking it's something else, but this is what this palette looks like. I just recently did a video with this one, so I will link that down below as well. I think that this palette is really good quality, but I wish that this palette had a little bit more contrast. I wish, for me, as someone who's light media, both of these shades are deep enough for my skin tone. But I did hear from my friend that is a tan skin tone that she was wishing for a matte that was even darker. If you are a fair to a medium, I don't think that you're going to need something that goes deeper than this. But if you are deeper than that, maybe this one will miss that. And also for me, if you are fair, light, light, medium, there's not something here that's light enough for you to be an inner corner highlight. So for me, I think that this palette is perfect as a glam, going out, sultry, sexy palette. But for me personally i'm gonna have to mix this with something that is lighter as well so that i can have the darkness and the light but that's again just a personal preference i prefer the palette that they came up with before the nouveau palette over this one and if you want to see me hold them up side by side and talk a little bit more about that check out the video down below that i did about this palette i also got this one because i think and this is me guessing i, I am guessing that this is the holiday release from Melt. These are the mini palettes, the bad zodiacs that they released. I don't know if they're gonna release anything else for holiday. Maybe they will. Maybe they will, but I don't think they will. If they do, listen, I'll be excited, but I don't think they will. These are four mini palettes. I'll, I'll just quickly show you what these look like, like with swatches and some close-ups, because again, I just recently did that. I will say that overall, I am fairly unimpressed with these. And the main reason is that I feel like they are a little bit predictable. Except the one that is Air. That one I feel is a little bit more well-rounded. It has more than two different formulas. I feel like that one is the winner out of this bunch. But other than that, I feel like these are... In 2022, they're a little predictable. And I was kind of hoping for something more. And I think it's a little bit sad because I Melt used to be the brand that was known for innovative, fun color stories and just unexpected things. And I feel the opposite when it comes to this collection. Oh, I did do a video where I used this one. It's like a, it's a first impression. It's the House Labs Triclone uh, Foundation and Powder. I'm not a fan. I've used this a couple of times since. This one is so hydrating and glowy on my skin. It looks like I just used one of those, you know, the spray fat one that you use in the pan. 
yeah, it you, looks like I've used that. I am, for reference, I'm 38. I have normal skin that gets a little, little oily around like my T-zone if it's humid and hot outside. Like right now, it is not humid and hot. I do not get oily skin. I have very, very normal skin. But with this one, I look like a grease ball. I was not convinced. And it was the exact same with the Patrick Ta one. But I just look at this packaging. But I dislike this one even more. I got mine in light three. I will link these down below in case you're interested in what like shade I got and stuff. I've tried to love this one because people love Patrick Ta. This one breaks up on me and looks like old porridge. I look greasy and glowy and like I'm about to break out into something very contagious. This looks atrocious on me. And keep in mind, I have normal skin. So maybe check out how someone with a dry skin is loving that foundation. But for me, the longevity was not there. I did not like that one at all. I also tried the Tarte Shape Tape Cloud Coverage. I bought this at the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. This one I like more and I like it even more when I can mix it with something that's a little glowy. I'll talk about one of them in a bit. I've been wearing this quite a bit. This one doesn't hold up the best on me. Uh, not that like it breaks up or anything, but it does let some oils seep through if it is really hot outside. But now we're getting into October and I will say that I can already feel the time temperatures dropping a little bit. So I'm gonna see how I like this one. What I liked about this one is that this is a natural matte foundation and it actually looks really good on my skin, especially if I can mix it with a glowy primer or a glowy highlighter. I have been loving, oh, I have the old one here as well. Here, I have the old uh, Fenty Ease Drop here as well because I used to have the shade eight and I did buy the shade number nine. For some reason, I put the eight back here as well. But I bought the number nine when I bought this glowy Ease Drop All Over Glow Enhancer. I really like this one. I thought that this one, this is one of my favorite foundations of all time. This is the foundation that holds up the best on me. If I'm going to an amusement park in the middle of a desert on a humid day, humid day in the desert, you get it. If, I, if I'm looking for a foundation to last on me for 14 hours outside, this is the one I'm going for because this one looks great on me. That's why I bought it in another shade because the shade I had before was too light. So I bought shade number nine instead. This one surprised me. I thought that this one was going to be like the uh, like the Charlotte Tilbury, like the glow one, the Hollywood, you know, those glowy like primer things. This one is lighter and airier and this one doesn't change the formula at all, according to me, to the foundations that I mix it into. I do not use this as a primer. I mix this into matte foundations and these two together is a match made in heaven. It makes it look like, instead of a natural matte, it looks like a skin-like, not glowy, but there's a little life to it. It doesn't look glittery. It doesn't change the longevity. Uh, these two together, these were the only ones I brought on my 10 day road trip vacation. If that tells you anything about how I feel about that one. Ooh, let me just quickly talk about this one because this is so fun. I haven't used it yet, but <laughs> it is here. It is my nail polish from Besame. Look, it's even crunk on the side. And look at this. <laughs> this is so amazing. And it's the, the elixir of the llama here. It's just called the yeah, extract of llama, not elixir. Extract of llama and... And what I really love about this is that they made this sticker so that you can peel it and it's exactly like in the movie. Genius. I really, really like this one. I still haven't used it. It is pink like it is in the movie. I'm not even a pink nail polish lover, but I love the execution of this. I love everything about this. And I even removed my nail polish uh, on my toenails so that I can wear it because I do my nails at a salon, but yeah, I'm gonna put paint this on my toenails. I regret nothing. I regret nothing. I also bought this one and I bought this out of recommendation for you. I had been talking about dry shampoos and some of you were saying that the Batiste dry shampoo volumizing was the favorite of Lauren May Beauty. Um, and I think that her and I have a very similar hair type that like straight kind of fine hair. So I thought I'd give it a try. I've only used it once so far and I really love the Batiste dry shampoo. This one gives a little structure to the hair. so. 
I will let you know how I feel about this once I've been able to use it more because like I said, I only used it once. Oh, where is the actual, here it is. I bought the Glow Recipe Guava Vitamin C Bright Eye Gel Cream. This is for the eyes and it comes with a little pump like this and it smells just a little sweet, nothing like, like nothing a lot. I have really been loving this one because I only had one eye cream. I'm not a skincare expert. I'm not a skincare person that like loves trying a dif different things and love finding different things. But I have been trying a eye cream that I've been loving, but it has a retinol in it. And I don't want to use that every day and especially not during the day. So I got this one to use the days, the nights that I don't want to use that one. Because this one is just a little gel and it's also a gel cream and so far i really like it it is gentle it feels light the dispenser is really nice and yeah so far i really enjoy it that's my quick review of that one i also bought the ace beauté violet sage palette and i have actually used this in two different videos and i I'm very excited when I'm able to use palettes in more than one video. So I'll try to do something for like Instagram or TikTok. You know, sometimes you get a little overwhelmed. So I do have actually used this one in two different videos and I really like it. I did one look where I used every shade in the palette. You seem to really love that look. I wasn't convinced about the look, but then I did a look where I only used the greens and oh, I really like that look. I think that this is a really good palette. Some people, actually a lot of people, a lot, maybe 20 people were telling me in the comments that you felt the difference between this quality and the other quality from Ace Beauté. So I feel like I need to use it again just to make sure because I have not seen that yet. But since I seem to be the only person who didn't recognize it, it shows that maybe I need to use it a little bit more just to make sure if I'm missing what you're seeing. So, so far I haven't had any problems, but I've only used it twice and I have heard from other people that you do not think it's the same quality. So I will report back on that as when I know. I also bought these and these are actually uh, some of the few things in this haul that I haven't used because I just got these in. This is the NYX F... <laughs> if I could speak. SFX Matte like paint pot things and I don't think oh they're actually like there's no nothing on here but I bought three different colors because I they had something similar to this I don't know if it was exactly this formula but they had like pastels my dogs are snoring they had like pastels for pride and I bought the pastel yellow and I really liked it I like using it for details with like an eyeliner brush I like using it for like um can you hear him snoring Oh, it's Kaisa. That's not very ladylike, Kaisa. Oh my God, she's snoring like an old man. I like using them as like eyeshadow bases. So I bought the orange fired up, the must see teal, and I bought the red that's called Dragon Eyes. So I am gonna try these. Maybe I'll do a testing new drugstore. I've been doing a couple of videos like that on my channel. You seem to really enjoy those, but yeah, I will be trying these out. But this is the latest thing that I got in in my haul. I swear these dolls are so dramatic. I don't know if you can even hear them. I also bought uh, some of these new lip products from Give Beauty. I bought both of the lip pencils and the lip gloss and I think I used these in the same video as I used one of these and it was also the video where I tried the House Labs foundation. I will try and group the products in the description box as I use them in the video in case you want to go in and look. I like the, the lip pencils. I prefer the one that's wooden actually. This one I've used the most since. This one is too pigmented for my liking. If you like a pigmented gloss, this is a good gloss. I prefer gloss that's not pigmented. I know that that is like not very common, but I prefer a gloss that has a little bit of color. I don't want I don't want a clear gloss. I want a little bit of color, but I don't want it to be opaque. Like this one. I'm wearing the well, this is a gloss and a stick. It's the just a tint from Colourpop. It's this bright red. Remember how I talked about how much I like this? It's like see-through, but there's still some color and it's glossy. And yeah, I really, really like this one. That like blush and that like um, this red blush and that red lip tint. 
I've used them so many times. That blush, I'm wearing it today. I will link the things that I'm wearing on my face in a pinned comment in case you're interested in this eyeshadow palette, lip color, and all of that. I've used that blush every day this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I'm filming this on a Friday. Love it. Love that blush. It is the perfect effortless red. Sheer, wonderful. Love it. Absolutely love it. I bought some other things from Ulta as well. Did I make an order with all of these things in one? It, it could have been because, oh no, one of them I bought, I'm not, I'm not sure. This is the second thing that I bought in the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. It is the Too Faced Hangover Pillow Balm and I got it in Cocoa Kiss. Really love this formula. I have one from before and I have it in my purse at all times. I have the banana one. Think that is a beautiful formula. It has a little bit of a milky tint to it. It's a little bit cooling. I love the scent of it. I love the feel of it. I think they're beautiful. I also tried these Milani. Is this the same? I think this is the same video as that House Lamps Foundation. It's the what fluff? Oh, look! Do you see that fluff? I was like, where is this from? It's from the ears. The Hocus Pocus ears. We're coming to that as well. So it's a highlighter, a under eye brightener, and a liquid contour. And I used these as well in the same video. And I think I used this uh, about face blush as well in that video. I think they're all decent. But I think that the things that I like the most are the highlighter and the contour. But I don't like the packaging. I think the packaging is a little bit faulty. The blush... I'm not sold on it. I think it's a little too sheer. And then I have a couple of things left. Oh, I actually bought one of these sets from Sephora because I've been wanting to try this, but I didn't want to buy a full size. And this is the Pillow Talk from Charlotte Tilbury. So I bought the Pillow Talk lip liner and the Pillow Talk lipstick in a mini just because I wanted to see what all the all the fuss was about. Like what was all the fuss about? It's a nice color. I, did I need it? No, but as a makeup reviewer, maybe, if I'm gonna be honest, because it's one of those colors that everybody keeps referencing to, and I just wanted to see what it was all about. So the last thing that I have here that I bought myself is that I bought these mini palettes from BH Cosmetics. I'm gonna show you quickly just some swatches and what these look like. I do have a dedicated video to these, and I feel like there was a lot of a lot of stirred up feelings with this. Uh, a lot of people were saying that, oh, you could tell that Makeup Revolution has ruined the formula. And I think that some people don't know how long it takes to develop makeup. And uh, there is like just no way that Makeup Revolution would have time, I think, to make these and put their own formula in it from the time that they bought the company until these were released. And the information that Makeup Revolution has given themselves is that this collection, which is the mini palettes, plus the collection that came out at the same time, which was that nude collection, are two collections that uh, BH Cosmetics already had done to be released before they went into Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So what I'm thinking is that when Makeup Revolution bought the brand, they probably just gave them funding to just order the bulk of these collections. And also Makeup Revolution has said that they are not gonna change the, make the BH Cosmetics formula. And why would they? Like that's the, I, this is me guessing, but I think the main reason why Makeup Revolution bought BH Cosmetics is to gain access to that formula because it is well known that the BH Cosmetics formula is one of the best affordable formulas out there, one of the best formulas to be honest, and to be able to gain access to that with the capital that I'm guessing that uh, like Makeup Revolution has, why would they change that? How I feel about these palettes is that I don't like the color stories of these palettes, but I don't hate the formula, but it's not the great BH Cosmetics formula. It's that formula that they've had in a couple of palettes that have been okay, but not amazing, like the Puerto Rico palette. Um, they also have like the Switzerland palette. There's a couple of palettes that's like, it's okay, but it's not the great Passion in Paris blueberry muffin quality. So I don't think that this is Makeup Revolution quality at all. And that's coming from someone that's been reviewing BH Cosmetics for quite some years right now. I have no reason to be lying to anyone, but I'm interested to see what happens in the future with BH Cosmetics. Uh, what's going to be like, is, is there going to be new products? Is there going to be new lines? Are they going to be sold in more countries? I mean, are, is BH Cosmetics going to be sold in the same countries as Make a Revolution? I mean, that would be amazing. I'm intrigued to see what happens because at the foundation, BH Cosmetics is a brand with good ideas and great formulas 
they weren't just executing the whole marketing thing maybe to the best of their abilities okay let's get into some of the things that i got in pr and we're just gonna i don't want to say speed through this but let's not linger on these products for too long wait this is opening the wrong direction here we go this is the what was this collection called something night night of creation right from kaleidos they came out with some multi-chrome eyeliners and some quads i can't see anything because i have this whole box in front of me they came out with some uh, quads and they also came out with some like multi-chrome eyeliners i do have a dedicated video to these in case you are interested i think these are really fun i think these are really cool i do hope that we get to see another one of the bigger palettes from kaleidos as well in the future because even though i like quads and i really do i would like to see them do like a full creativity with oh look at this one with the full creativity with one of their bigger palettes i would just be intrigued to see what they would do i do have a video like i said on that one and i will link it down below i just put this one back here because i wanted to show you i did get the cream bronzer from merit i have been using this in quite some videos so far i really like it this is very very effortless and this is a little bit more on the dewy side i have to set this down with a powder but i will say it blends beautifully it's very user friendly very user friendly and even if i don't set it down with a powder it's not sticky it just feels a little creamy but like not like my hair is gonna stick to it and they also gave me one of these it says merit here right yeah merit one of these little pouches to put like your makeup in if you're like traveling i honestly think this is cute like for some looks that could be a handbag that could be a handbag for sure. Let's talk about the palettes that I have on my eyes today. I do have a video. I tried a new concept and I will probably do that again very soon. And maybe even this week because I liked it for me and for my stress levels where I was able to, to gather a couple of indie, like new indie palettes in one video. Because sometimes it gets to be so many new makeup releases that I just want to group them together a little bit. So it's not my entire feed is new makeup. So this one is the Bella Beauté Bar Strange and Unusual palette. And this is the palette that I have on my eyes today. I used the white, the light green, the mossy green, the black, and this iridescent green shade is actually the one that I have on my lid. It's a really, really pretty palette. The shimmers are incredible, out of this world, high quality just really really impressive and the color choices are really really cool some of the mattes are a little thin and uh, so i think that like the the shimmers 10 out of 10 the mattes 6 out of 10 they're workable they're beautiful but i think they're a little thin for my personal liking but i still think the palette is beautiful and i like the execution of the color story i think that's really cool in that same video i also used this one which is the collaboration between gourmand girls and dudes by the bunny this is the spooked palette this is a mix of mattes metallics a couple of dual chromes and this is like a halloween inspired palette i really like the quality of this one uh, the shimmers are not as spectacular as in, in the Bella Beauté bar, but I do like the mattes one in this one a little bit more. And I love that both of them had a matte white that's really, really cool. The next one, let's take the palettes that were included in that video then, because I had this one as well. This is the first palette that I ever tried from Sugar Drizzle Cosmetics. This is the mattes palette, and this is an all matte palette. And you know I love that, and this is mainly purples because the owner really loves purples and as i said in the video where i did a look with this and i will like i said link that down one down below this is beautiful and it's really good quality this is the best quality mats of the the indies that i'm going to be talking about a bit like incredible good matte quality it could have been edited down a little bit i understand that like the whole concept of i love purples i want as many as possible I think this could have benefited from being a 12 pan palette, um, just in my personal opinion. So where is the little... Oh, here it is. The Fantasy Cosmetica palette. This is the Bard palette. And this is the last palette that was in that little video where I was doing swatches and a look with four new indie palettes. Just showing you a rundown of what was like released within that near time. This is a really beautiful uh, palette inspired by well fantasy bards if you play like any kind of fantasy game i think this is based more on like dungeons and dragons but still it's 
I just think it's very fun and it's a really cool autumn inspired color story. All four of these palettes. I do have a discount code and my discount code is Anjeshka. And I also got another palette from... Oh, it's right here from Sugar Drizzle that they released now for Halloween. And this is the Trick Roar Treat. And I think this one is available as you're seeing this. It's a little six pan palette. And this one will be included in the next video that I do a roundup of the indie releases. I've already done the look with this one. Really, really cute six pan. It has three like one shimmer and two like more uh, duochrome multichromes and then three mattes. I think this is more of a fall as color story. And I really loved the look that I did with this palette. So that one is coming up. And I don't know if I had any swatches of that one yet because I don't think I filmed those yet, but just know that that is coming. I also have the Blend Bunny Cosmetics Noct... This is so hard to say. Noctilucent. I think that's what it's called. And this is a highlighter palette. I am wearing actually the Bella Beauté Bar, the Oracle palette on my cheeks. And I will say personally, I prefer the Bella Beauté Bar because I feel like it looks a little bit more effortless and just skin-like. This, if you like ET phone home, seen from the stars, like satellites will pick up your highlight, this is the one. Because this is very, very blinding. So if you love that, I would recommend this one. If you love something that's still visible and very glowy, but just a little bit more skin-like, I would recommend the Oracle one. I think it's just a matter of preference. And I do have a cold with Blend Money Cosmetics. My cold there is Anjeshka as well. This one I have a dedicated video on. This is the Nomad Cosmetics Hudson Valley palette. Uh, I still have the packaging of this one. That's unusual. I'm trying to be better at like getting rid of packaging because I don't need to be saving packaging. This is a matte packaging that feels a little bit like almost recycled paper and then these like metallic details. And this is a very matte heavy palette with three shimmers in the middle. This is just so quintessential fall. And I think that if you were looking for that like fall themed eyeshadow palette, I didn't think you can go wrong with this one unless you're looking for something that with way more shimmers. But I had so much fun with this palette. Honestly, I think that this is a beautiful palette. And I know a lot of you were really interested in this one as well. And I can totally see why there is like a more neutral, cool toned green neutral side here. And then this more warm reddish orange side here and three beautiful shimmers. I think they did so good with this palette. I am not surprised to see as many people being interested in this one as they were because I think they did so good with that palette. There is another palette. I haven't filmed with this one yet. I just got this palette, but this I think will be the last palette that's going to be included in the uh, um, <laughs> in the like roundup of like what's new in indie right now. And this is the Cyberpunk palette by Game Beauty. Uh, this one is released now. I think it released on Friday as I'm filming this. I'm pretty sure that this is available now. I don't have any swatches on this one yet, but just know that this will be included in the video. I really like the layout of this one and I love that they put the yellow and the blue next to each other. It feels a little bit like the like the Swedish flag and it just makes me like oh the Swedish flag that's so cute so I like the color store of this one this is the brightest palette from Game Beauty so far I'm very excited to be trying this one out like I said it is already available and Cole and Jessica will give you 10% off at Game Beauty if you're interested I do have a code with them again like I said the info is going to be in the description box but I don't have any thoughts about this yet because I just received it I haven't swatched it I haven't used it I haven't done anything with it I also got a package from Shroud Cosmetics they were gonna send me the last um like the last it's freaking bats that they had and then for many reasons it didn't happen uh but now they reached out and asked me if they could send me both the old release and the new release so this is the one that came out last year this is Betty bean and shroud it's freaking bats i haven't tried this one yet this is the one that came out last year of your of course i am going to be trying it at some point i just haven't done it yet oh wait the plastic is messing up. Cooperate, cooperate. They also sent me the Creepy Cute 1 and 2. I still have my Creepy Cute 1, so I will be putting this one in a giveaway. This is a really good, um, it's a really good pastel palette. And then this is the new one. This is the new collaboration between Butter Bean and Shroud, and this is the Halloween palette. 
So this is what this one looks like. And this is also going to be included as the same video as this one. So uh, I, am, I have already used this one. I've already made a look with it and the look was beautiful. I really enjoy the look and I can't wait for you to see it as well. So I've only used this palette once and I haven't swatched it yet. So you're going to have to wait for that video to see some swatches. But I'm very excited to have this palette in my life and to be able to showcase it to you. So yeah, I know a lot of you wanted to see a look with that palette. So just know that that is coming up. Another collab that came out is the Teresa is Lethal, which is the round two between uh, Lethal Cosmetics and Teresa is Dead. So this is the palette here. I actually played with this palette. As I'm filming this, I played with it yesterday. So this is very fresh in my memory. This is what the palette looks like. It is a mix between dark, almost grungy neutrals and a couple of almost pastels. And then with this silver, I did do a look with this palette and I will leave the video down below if you want to see more more like swatches and hear my thoughts about it. There's also some cheek products included in this collection. I just put it in this in the C palette so that it would make sense for me. I think that this is a really fun collection. There was also some gel liners. They're in this basket somewhere in the bottom. So if you want to see that video, I'm fairly sure uh, it was released today. So even if it's sold out, I'm sure they're going to restock if you were interested in that collection. And I will leave that video down below. One of the most anticipated collabs I will say as well this year is the Colourpop and Hocus Pocus 2 collection. I think that the movie is available now and I think I'm gonna go and see if I can watch it. So this is the palette. This was sent to me from Colourpop. You can use the code and you should get Colourpop and get $5 off a $20 or more order. And I will say that this is my favorite Hocus Pocus palette. I think this is such a nice mix of neutrals, and grungy tones with the bright oranges and greens, a little purple. I really like this and I love the look that I did. In this collection, there were also this highlighter that has a cat on it. This is a soul body highlighter and this is actually a green iridescent highlighter. I think you can see the green in here. I thought that that was pretty cool. So that was part of the collection as well. And they also had some of these, um, I found two of the colors here and they had some glosses and they had some of these jelly mud shadows. This one that's called I am calm exclamation point. It's so cool. It is an iridescent greenish gold with almost some tealy sparkle in there. And there are some bigger particles in there as well. And I used this one in the video, the one that I'm going to link down below. And I loved it so much that the next day after I just had to use it again, because that's how impressed I is when I am with this jelly matte shadow. So if you wanted to get something, this one has a little cat on the front. If you wanted to get something from this collection and you didn't want to get the palette, I highly recommend this jelly match in I am calm. It is so dimensional and so beautiful. There's also a black gloss in this collection. Can I find that one? Oh, here's the other Yelly Much. It is a purple. One gloss is a like an orange and the sparkly like white. This one is missing a lid for some reason. Oh, here's the black one. This one is so cool as well. It leaves like an almost grayish sparkly tint on your lips. Honestly, I thought that they did really good with this collection, bringing out some stuff that they haven't had in the Hocus Pocus collections before, make it in a color scheme that looks new and fresh and fun, but still not way too off. And also with some interesting quirky additions like the black gloss and this like iridescent topper and the green highlight. I thought it was pretty cool. I also got some eyeliners from uh, Game Beauty. This is in collaboration with Aki Dearest, which I think is a streamer. And it is a teal, a blue and a black. I haven't been able to try these yet, but I think I'm going to try and see if I can use one of the blue ones when I use this palette. So stay tuned for that video. I'm going to try and see if I can include them. I also got some brow products from Benefit. Uh, actually quite a few brow products. Oh, and I got this brow pomade in the right color. This is 2.5. I think I'm going to try this one out actually. Have you tried the brow pomade from Benefit? It looks really nice. And I like the packaging. It's a really smart packaging where you can like, you don't have to like dip in too much. There's like a little smart lid where you can dispense a little better. So I, I really love the packaging of this one. Benefit gave me a code where you can get a discount of... I think it's 15% of the benefits site. I don't remember the code 
by heart, but I will leave it in the description box so you don't have to wait for a Sephora or an Ulta sale or a Black Friday sale. If you need to stock up on some of your products from Benefit, if you're using the brow pencil, if you're using anything from Benefit and you use it up, I know a lot of people use the Benefit brow products and you go through it, you can use my code and you will get 15% off at the everything on the benefit website even if you wanted to try some of the new things and i will leave that code as well down below oh and they gave me this angled brush so i'm gonna try that brow pomade i want to see how it is bubble also sent me a super clear acne treating serum two percent salicylic acid i do not have acne i have never ever trouble have trouble with acne or breakouts even when i was a teen but bubble has really nice like straightforward um, skincare. I've used a couple of their products. I'm gonna keep this around and I'll see if someone around me is interested in trying this one out because this isn't a product for me because I do not have acne prone skin in any way, uh, shape or form. Oh, here's the ears. This is part of the Hocus Pocus collection. Cat ears. Meow. So I did use these in the video as well. They're they were interesting. Okay, there's only one more thing in here that I would like to mention, and that is that I actually got a really fun PR package from Hard Candy. They sent me a couple of these small eyeshadow palettes, the teal and the purple, and they sent me a little neutral one as well. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using this one. I'm probably going to be using one of these two. I think they're so beautiful. And they sent me some liquid eyeliners. Oh, Look at this green liquid eyeliner and they also sent me a plumping without the pain gloss and this one the universally flattering clear blush have you heard about this one i think that this one went viral on tiktok so i was thinking look at this this is so interesting wait let me take this one out this is a blush i'm guessing this is one of those ph activate i have no we need to try it out, right? We need to try it out. It smells like nothing, but you can see the doe foot is like pink. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna try this out. Like I said, I have a couple of things from NYX as well, and then I have a couple of things from Hard Candy. Maybe I can do a video trying some new drugstore things. Is there anything else from the drugstore that you have seen lately that you would like me to try out? I am open for suggestions. I will say that it's been really fun for me to be able to try drugstore brands at drugstore prices because that was never that was never really the case when I was in Sweden. But let me know what you think about these. Like I said, a lot of these things were sent to me as PR, but I did buy a lot of these things myself as well. And let's just see how October is going to be. I am excited to do a video talking about like how I want to do this low buy because I, I feel like I have some thoughts and I feel like I want to do it a little bit more different than I did last time when I had a low buy because I think I had a low buy in 2018, 19, 18, 19, now I can't remember. One of those two years I had a low buy and I feel like I have some I feel like I have some thoughts. I have some things I want to share with you. Have you tried any of these items that I talked about today? What was your favorite item or your fail that you bought this month? Let us know all about it. My fail was definitely that Urban Decay thing. I did not need that one at all. My favorite thing that I bought has to be the Isma nail polish, right? I haven't even used it yet, but I'm so excited. Can we just get a proper collection? Emperor's New Groove. Who's picking this up? I am gonna need a palette. I am gonna need a Kronk highlighter. I am gonna need Usma false lashes. Get on it. I hope you're having an amazing day. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again tomorrow for a new video. Bye.